As we continue our week on descending into greatness and on the importance of humility in the practice of our faith as Christians, I want to direct your attention today to 1 Thessalonians chapter 2. And Thessalonians, as those of you who have been watching these videos for a couple years now, I've heard me say before that it's probably the first, the oldest book in the New Testament, probably the first book that we have in the New Testament that was actually written down. And it was very special to be able to go to Thessaloniki in our trip to Greece last year and to picture Paul arriving in that port city and uh, sharing the gospel. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul's writing about uh, his life and work in that city and among the Thessalonians. And uh, he carried on his trade there. He was what we would call today a bivocational pastor or evangelist, if you will, working as a tent maker and also proclaiming the gospel. And in verses 9 to 13, um, he's sharing about that. And verse 12 uh, is a verse that really um, speaks a lot to me. He's describing how he was, he's been among them like a father with his children. And then verse 12 says, urging and encouraging you and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. Lead a life worthy of God. Uh, I just love that statement and that exhortation by Paul. And, you know, one of the things about Paul being like a father with his children, and whenever we have imagery like this, we always have to acknowledge that, uh, unfortunately, not every person even knows their father. Uh, so many children don't even grow up with a loving father in their home, unfortunately. But the image, when, when that's used in the Bible, is we are to picture God as uh, the most loving father we can imagine. And Paul here is trying to use this image uh, as, in a positive way, that he is with the Thessalonians, like a loving, devoted, protective father, trying to help his children to grow up to be the best that they can be. And he uses three different words, urging and encouraging and pleading that you lead a life worthy of God. Uh, and you think of urging, like you, you've got to do this. Urgency conveys a sense of importance and also timeliness that uh, you've got to act and you've got to act now. And encouraging uh, is that's, again, the bringing out the best encouraging us, people who encourage us, help us to grow and to be better and to be motivated to keep doing whatever it is that we're doing. And pleading implies almost a sense of emotional, you come on, please, this is really critically important. You can hear the emotion in pleading. Um, to lead a life worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. What an invitation that is for you and for me. That God calls you to be a part of his kingdom, to be a part of his work here on the world. Uh, and God calls you into his glory, to, into God's presence, which is beyond description and beyond our imagination. That you and I are invited to be in relationship with God and partnership with God. But we won't be comfortable in God's kingdom or with God's glory if we aren't leading a life worthy of God.